Hi, I'm Carolyn Tiefold. I'm a graduate student in evolutionary biology at Stanford University, but I do a lot of baking, and that's what I want to talk about, is chemical leavening. And so that is the process by which you basically use a chemical reaction, baking soda and acid, to create tiny little bubbles, which eventually would become bigger bubbles, in baked goods like muffins or cakes. So they have this nice, light, spongy, air-filled texture. The basic way this happens is you take your baking soda and when you mix it up in your dough, you use some sort of an acid. It can be lemon juice, it can be buttermilk, it can be brown sugar, anything like that. And the chemical reaction between the baking soda and the acid produces carbon dioxide gas bubbles all throughout your muffin, say. When you put your muffin in the oven, these gas bubbles get hot and when gas gets hot, it expands. And so these bubbles get bigger. At the same time, you bake the muffin and so you create this sort of hard mesh of baked dough around the bubbles and you end up with the spongy texture. That's the short version. This is the long version. This is sodium bicarbonate. This is baking soda. And when you get this wet with an acid, a couple things happen. First, it dissociates. So this sodium goes off on its own. You're left with bicarbonate. And then a proton wanders by from the acid. And if you remember from chemistry, Acidity just measures how many protons there are floating around in a liquid. The more acidic something is, the more protons, or these charged hydrogen ions, it has floating around. So this proton from the acid sneaks in here, bonds with this oxygen, breaks this bond open, and leaves you with two byproducts. Water, or H2O, and carbon dioxide. And this is the carbon dioxide that forms the little bubbles in your muffin that give it that nice spongy texture. That's baking soda. What about baking powder? This is essentially that same reaction in a jar. So this contains baking soda as well as a compound that forms an acid when it gets wet. So when you bake with baking powder, you don't have to add an acid. All you have to do is add something wet. It has its own acid. I'm going to show you how that works. So here I have a bunch of Erlenmeyer flasks. And two of them have baking powder and two have baking soda. And for each of those, I have little balloons attached around the mouths. And in the red balloons here, I have water, which is not an acid. And in the white balloons, I have acetic acid, which is just common table vinegar. Now, when I lift these up and I mix the liquids and the baking soda or powder, you're gonna be able to see that all the carbon dioxide produced is going to be captured by these balloons. So we'll actually be able to see it, as you can see right here. While that's happening, I wanna show you what this looks like in baking. So I made a bunch of experimental muffins the other day. And this one I made with baking powder and this with baking soda. And I used a neutral batter. I actually even tested to make sure it was neutral. And uh, that balloon is a little bit weird. So you can see the one with baking powder is nice and fluffy. It has a pretty good crumb and lots of little bubbles. Whereas the one with baking soda is a lot thinner and it's tougher and denser and it does have some big air bubbles, but they're really ugly and they're probably formed from steam in the oven. And we can see when we look here why there's that big difference between using no acid and using baking powder and baking soda. Here with the baking powder, we can see that we're creating a lot of carbon dioxide in both those reactions, whether we use vinegar or an acid or the water, because we've gotten it wet. Whereas over here, we can see with baking soda, what we use makes a really big difference. Here, with vinegar, we get carbon dioxide and we get a pretty nice looking muffin. But here, with, just with water and baking soda, we can't create that carbon dioxide and we get nothing and we end up with a hockey puck. And that's basically how it works. Thanks.